Def, over to you. Well, America's Morning Headquarters has you covered through the mid-morning hours. Jen Carfagno is here with a look at what's coming up at 9 a.m. And we've got all the severe weather coverage talking about that and the temperature changes. Yes. But we've got a fun story for you because it's National Park Week and our friends from more than just parks have released their list of the best and worst parks for 2024. And some of them On apparently your, are... I think it was Instagram or maybe Twitter. You can follow her, Jen Carfagno. Yeah, thank you, um, Jeff. You were like holding your hat at some <laughs> national park. I was at a to... very windy trail and I was trying to do this, but it was right, so windy. Just get I kept, a good picture with like, but I kept losing my hat, so it was like. <laughs> what national park was that? Do that you was remember? Virgin Islands National Park. Do you have a fave? That might be it. It's by the water. Yeah. Good morning, that's true. everyone. We are here with you for the mid morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. And that's right. The Weather Channel has you covered here from coast to coast. Yeah, and how about this? You know, the central U.S. is kind of in the bullseye for the next mm -hmm. round of storms over the coming days, including some big and small towns. I don't know, Elk City, Oklahoma, uh, maybe even Oklahoma City, eventually Kansas City. This is a big deal. Uh, it's going to be with us for a few days. I think the biggest sort of uh, initial threat comes Thursday and then mm -hmm. last of the weekend. But on either side of that, we kind of have yeah. multiple days of severe weather starting today here. Yeah. And it's really interesting when I look at the forecast, how long the severe threat is going to sit over communities yeah. just like this. Yeah, and it gets weary, right? When you're under that yeah. threat of dealing with severe weather day after day after day, it, it's taxing. It means that other kinds of weather get stuck in other places, too. So <laughs> we'll talk about that coming up. Um, but first, that those temperature swings that are going to be happening here. I know a lot of you have felt it, and the swing in temperatures coming are going to play a role in the severe storms. Now, Boston, you woke up to a frost advisory this morning, but it's going to change by the end of the week. So I just want to say that this morning in North Florida, it was in the upper 30s as well. Wow. How about that? Crestview, one of my favorite places, 38 degrees this morning. At least, could have been lower That's than that hour. I mean, for any time of the year. Right. Certainly, <laughs> like, getting, what was this now? Late April, yes. basically? It yeah. was 40 in my house. Oh. And it was hard not to put the puff of coat on, I have to say. <laughs> right. I knew it was going to be 75 later, but it was chilly. Yeah. It's all going to change. Yes, it shall. Well, families in the Midwest, also in the crosshairs of the temperature swings and also some stormy times. Uh, that's an area where we are finding some of the uh, wet weather and gray skies. So let's talk a little bit more about yeah. how this is all going to be playing out with this system that's going to quickly move on through, but again, also bring in some of it truly really was a very bad storm here, and I'm going to give you some perspective on that here. Uh, both from the winds and from the hail, from the wind perspective, very powerful straight line winds. From the hail perspective, this is not an area of the country that you think of getting this really large hail. So that's the area that we're watching. There's Rock Hill. There's the thunderstorm that was coming through. We can put it in the 3D so you can see just how tall and strong this thunderstorm was. You're extending well up into the atmosphere, went right over Rock Hill. And a thunderstorm like this, a supercell like this, has the capability ability to hold on to hailstones inside to grow very large. And that's what happened here. Just inside that storm, we had some intense hail. Now, was it record breaking? So, uh, the state record is four and a half inches. That was in the year 2000. The largest hail on Saturday was four inches in Rock Hill. So yes, it's close, but it actually is not a record, but it's up there in the upper echelon. And again, this is not an area of the country that you think of for that large hail. That's more like in Oklahoma or Texas. See, we're expanding out across the Mississippi Valley, but while, you know, obviously it can happen, we just saw it and we've seen, you know, something slightly larger before, it's not the area that you most often think of. We do actually have the chance for some hail in the area that you would expect the very large hail today. We're watching a zone right here across parts of West Texas is up into the panhandle. This is where we could see that two inch size or greater hail. Again, remember what happened in Rock Hill in South Carolina in uh, North Carolina was that four inch hail. That's possible today. Two inch size or greater is the risk area that we are looking at. And what's going to be happening here is that we're going to have a new area of low pressure developing the hail parameter. This area in purple showing us where that's uh, sort of the likely zone for it. And there's not going to be a lot of storms, but there's going to be a few and any one of them have that potential to grow to get that strength, have that strength, that strength in an updraft, which could allow that kind of hail to form here. You got to have the warm, really high dew point air coming into it. Um, you get little super cool droplets that form out there and with a strong updraft they can stay up suspended above the freezing level and that allows them to grow and grow and grow and the hail will fall when it gets even uh, it gets larger than it can the, the updraft can sustain it. So this is something we'll watch for you today but actually today is just the start of a multi-day risk Greg and right here in the middle of the country in an area 67 so things are really warming up as we get through this week here and there's a trend that's you're going to play out in so many places including New York City, which I think the key thing about this forecast, guys, is that not only
normally does it warm up, but it dries out. No rain. Warm that and dry. Yeah. Weekend. Double bonus. It is a bonus. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good, a good weekend coming up. Well, uh, a lot of cheers out there, too, as uh, people enjoy we this. We are asking you, what is your favorite national park? And, you know, which spot do you think should kind of join their ranks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like this question here. I'm curious to learn about Where some of you. It's in Michigan. It oh, okay. Ah. All right. Do they have sleeping bear there? Do you have to go and find out, right? <laughs> I have to go and find <laughs> out. <laughs> well, go to Thread, send us your comments, share your pics and video with us using the hashtag YesTV. Well, the next five minutes, All we take 63 deep parks deep. last season. Our guides needed a break, but they've been staying busy updating their rankings and producing a new film. Friends of the show, Jim and Will Paddits from More Than Just Parks, join us now. And we really enjoyed the whole journey last year, going to all the 63 parks, virtually, of course. But you recently released a list of the best parks for 2024. So, Jim, what determines where a park lands on this list? And how did that add up to Olympic being number one again? Yeah, yeah it's see a great this. looks phenomenal. You guys are like the sommeliers of national parks. I feel like they could recommend <laughs> the perfect park for all of us. Many thanks, Jim and Will Paddits. You can check out their full rankings along with a guide to planning your trip to the national parks at morethanjustparks.com. Awesome stuff, right? Man, it just gets you excited to go it visit does. the parks. It does. Well, don't forget our we question. through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. That's right. The Weather Channel has you covered here from coast to coast. The central U.S. does look indeed to be in the bullseye for the next round of severe thunderstorms including big and small towns, Elk City, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, you name it. So many of us in the path of severe weather, we think, upcoming. I like what you pointed out. Oh, we changed the view, but Elk City, moments ago, we could mm. see some of the clouds out there. Mm. And it's cute little alto cumulus cloud deck. Yes. And I find them one of the cutest clouds. And you had another good observation about them. They oftentimes are the harbingers of severe weather. Yeah. They tell us that the atmosphere is at least unstable aloft. Um, and it doesn't mean that severe weather is imminent, but it's a sign that things are turning around. Right. It's a warm season cloud. We like that. It's a warm season cloud here. Yeah. So we'll talk more about here what the skies are going to turn into over the coming days. Plus, big temperature changes across the country. Yeah, we've seen it, right? How about some chilly times? You mentioned in Florida, down to the 30s this morning. A couple of locations. Crestview, Florida was 38 degrees. There was another one not far, 39 degrees to Funiac Springs, I think. So, yeah, upper 30s in the Florida panhandle. It's late April. Yes. That's chilly. Even for any time of the year, that's chilly. Late yeah. April. Frost advisory mm. in Boston. Hopefully you didn't really plant anything. You know, you don't. You don't only wait till at least Mother's Day up here to do any kind of planting. Sometimes Memorial Day, actually. Clear skies overnight tonight. It's going to be, uh, well, as we get you, I guess the next night it gets cold again. Mm -hmm. Chilly, chilly times. Yeah. Well, uh, we go from what a nice, beautiful blue skies here in Boston to the Midwest, where we've been dealing with a bit more cloud cover here. You can see Chicago's mm -hmm. draped in those clouds right now. This is an area, though, that is going to face the threat for some showers across the Midwest. Let's detail some of these areas and where the rain is going to be heading here for the rest of the day. We've been watching some of this rain across northern.